Gudrun Himmler, the daughter of Heinrich Himmler, chose a path unlike many others in her position. Born into the family of one of the principal architects of the Holocaust, Gudrun's life was steeped in the shadow of her father's notorious legacy. But instead of distancing herself from the horrors her father helped orchestrate, she chose a different path. Gudrun stood as a pillar of unwavering support for her father's comrades during the turmoil of the post-war period. She dedicated her life to aiding those she referred to as the major Nazi butchers in distress. Her actions, driven by a deep-seated sense of loyalty, perplexed many. It was an unusual path, one that seemed to defy the global condemnation of the Nazi regime. Despite the world's loathing for the architects of the Holocaust, Gudrun's loyalty to her father's comrades never wavered. Her devotion was as staunch as it was controversial. She was a beacon for those struggling to maintain the ideologies of a fallen regime, providing them with aid and comfort in their most desperate times. This steadfast devotion presents a complex picture of loyalty and the unbreakable bonds of family. For Gudrun, her father was not just a Nazi officer, but also a man she deeply admired and loved. Her actions underscore the complex relationship between familial affection and moral judgment, a relationship that is often fraught with contradiction and conflict. Gudrun Himmler's story is a stark reminder of the power of familial bonds, even in the face of widespread condemnation and shame. It's a tale that forces us to question the nature of loyalty and its limits. It's a narrative that highlights the strength of family ties, even when they are tied to a dark and horrifying past. Her story is one of unwavering loyalty and the unbreakable bonds of family. It serves as a testament to the complex interplay of family, history, and identity that the children of Nazis had to navigate in the aftermath of World War II. In stark contrast to Gudrun Himmler, we have Martin Adolf Bormann, son of Martin Bormann, the head of the Nazi party chancellery. Born into a world steeped in notoriety, young Martin faced a daunting legacy. His father, a major figure in the Nazi regime, left a shadow that could have consumed his life. Yet Martin chose to step out of this shadow, turning his back on his father's infamous history. Rather than succumbing to the weight of his heritage, Martin embarked on a personal quest for redemption. He chose a path that was as far from his father's as one could imagine. He became a priest, a servant of faith and compassion, with a calling to heal and to nurture. His journey led him to the vast plains and vibrant communities of Africa. Here, he found a place where his name held no power, where he could shed the burdens of his past, and where he could truly serve others. As a missionary, Martin dedicated his life to helping those in need, to building communities, and to spreading love and understanding. His life in Africa was not an escape, but a confrontation of his past. In each act of kindness, in every prayer whispered, and in all the lives he touched, Martin sought to counterbalance the horrors perpetrated by his father. He sought solace in service, forgiveness in faith, and redemption in the act of giving. Martin's story is a powerful testament to the human capacity to change, to break free from the chains of the past, and to choose a path of light, even when born in the darkest of shadows. His life underscores the power of personal choice and the transformative potential of empathy and service. Martin Adolf Bormann's journey might have begun under the shadow of his father, but it unfolded under the African sun, drenched in hope, faith, and a relentless quest for redemption. His journey reflects a profound transformation, seeking solace and forgiveness in the service of others. Rolf Mengele, son of the infamous Angel of Death Josef Mengele, faced the chilling legacy of his father head-on. Born in the aftermath of World War II, Rolf was shielded from his father's monstrous deeds during his early years. But as he grew older, the reality of his lineage gradually dawned upon him. The man he knew as his father was responsible for some of the most horrific crimes of the Holocaust. A man who had performed deadly human experiments in Auschwitz. A man who had become the embodiment of cold-blooded evil. At the age of 33, Rolf made a crucial decision. He chose to travel to Brazil, to confront the specter of his father's past, to seek answers to the questions that haunted him. This was not an easy journey. It was a path filled with trepidation and uncertainty, a path many would avoid. Yet Rolf was driven by a need for understanding, a need to comprehend the unfathomable, 
a need to reconcile his identity with the heinous legacy of his father. In Brazil, Rolf came face to face with his father. It was a moment of confrontation, a moment of truth. He questioned Joseph about his actions during the war, about the atrocities he had committed. He sought to understand how a man, a father, could carry out such inhuman acts. This was not a quest for justification, but rather a quest for comprehension, a quest for closure. The meeting was fraught with tension, filled with the weight of history and the pain of revelation. Yet, through this confrontation, Rolf found a semblance of understanding. The man before him was his father, but he was also the angel of death. It was a paradox he would have to live with, a paradox that would shape his life and his identity. Their meeting was a dramatic quest for understanding, a son's plea to comprehend the inhumane actions of a father. Rolf Mengele's confrontation with his father's legacy is a stark reminder of the long shadows cast by the past and the ongoing journey to reconcile with it. The story of the Goebbels' children is one of the most tragic among the children of Nazis. The chilling narrative begins with Joseph Goebbels, the Reich Minister of Propaganda, and his wife Magda. A couple deeply rooted in the Nazi ideology, their fanatic devotion to Hitler would lead to a heartbreaking end for their six innocent children. In the dying days of the Third Reich, as Berlin was besieged, the Goebbels family took refuge in the Vorbunker, adjacent to Hitler's bunker. It was here that the parents made a decision that would forever mark their place in history. Unable to bear the thought of their children living in a world without National Socialism, they decided to end their lives. The method was as cold as their resolve. Magda and Joseph Goebbels poisoned their six children, Helga, Hilda, Helmut, Holdine, Hedwig, and Hydrun, their ages ranging from 4 to 12. The parents used a lethal dose of cyanide, administered in the form of crushed capsules hidden in the children's food or drink. The children, unaware of their parents' horrific plan, went to sleep, never to wake up again. Later that night, Joseph and Magda Goebbels took their own lives. While the world celebrated the end of the Nazi regime, a dark cloud hung over the celebration, the tragic fate of the Goebbels' children, innocent lives lost to the fanatic devotion of their parents. The story of the Goebbels' children is a stark reminder of the depth of the Nazi indoctrination. It underscores the chilling reality of how far people can go when consumed by fanaticism and blind loyalty. The children, devoid of any choice or understanding, became the ultimate victims of their parents' extremist beliefs. This act of unimaginable horror leaves a permanent scar, a reminder of the fanaticism that consumed their parents. While these stories stand out, they are but a few of the many lives forever altered by the legacy of their parents. There are others, like Etta Goring, who publicly defended her father Hermann Goring, a leading member of the Nazi party. Then there's the tale of Niklas Frank, son of Hans Frank, the governor general of occupied Poland. Niklas spent his life condemning his father's actions, striving to break free from the shadow of his family's past. And let's not forget the story of Bettina Goring, the great niece of Hermann Goring. She chose a drastic measure to ensure her family's tainted bloodline ended with her, opting for sterilization. As we delve into these narratives, we see a range of responses, from acceptance and denial to guilt and atonement. These children navigate a complex legacy, forever shaped by their parents' deeds. They are the living reminders of a past that continues to reverberate through generations. The children of Nazis. Their lives are a testament to the complex interplay of history, family, and identity. They were born into a legacy they neither chose nor controlled, their lives forever marked by the deeds of their parents. Their stories, though varied, echo with the shared resonance of struggle, shame, and an unending quest for understanding and redemption. In the long shadows cast by the past, we see the resilience of the human spirit, the capacity for change, the pursuit of forgiveness, and the search for peace. Amidst the horrors of their heritage, some chose to break away and forge new paths, turning their backs on the sins of their parents, Others found themselves entangled in a web of denial or loyalty, their lives a testament to the enduring complexity of familial bonds. As we reflect on their stories, we are reminded of the long shadows cast by the past, but also of the capacity for change, forgiveness, and the search for peace. Even today, 
The descendants of these infamous figures grapple with the weight of their family history. Many have chosen to live quiet lives, far removed from their forebears' dark deeds. Some have stepped into the public eye, using their unique position to promote understanding, tolerance, and peace. They serve as living reminders of history's darkest days and of our collective responsibility to ensure such atrocities never happen again. In the case of Bettina Goering, the great-niece of Adolf Hitler's second-in-command, Hermann Goering, she chose sterilization to end the Goering lineage, a drastic step to ensure that her family's dark legacy would not continue. Niklas Frank, the son of Hans Frank, Hitler's personal lawyer and governor-general of occupied Poland, has spent his life atoning for his father's sins, writing books and giving lectures about the atrocities committed by the Nazis. Their lives and choices are a testament to the enduring impact of history on the present and future. They remind us that the shadows cast by the past are long, but not insurmountable. As we continue to explore the untold stories of history, let us remember the lessons these individuals teach us about the power of redemption, the importance of acknowledging the past, and the potential for change. Stay tuned for more stories that delve into the unexplored corners of our shared history. And remember, history is not just about the past, it's about what we choose to do with it in the present and how it shapes our future.